Hello students and welcome to AP Biology. This year's video is 2021 to 2022 here at TASM, the American International School of Muscat. I'm excited to have you in the class and I hope that you have a lot of fun. So this video will go over what is AP Biology, what are the four big ideas encompassing the course, and an outline of the course for the year. We'll go over the summer assignment, the AP exam coming up, and some of the coursework we have done in the past. These are all pictures from uh, this past year's class and just on graduation day, they got to check their um, bacterial transformation lab and they got a couple of the blue colonies, which was a lot of fun and we'll learn all about that. All right, what is AP Biology? It's supposed to represent a two semester college uh, introductory biology course for biology majors, complete with labs, at least 25% of the time in lab work. The recommended prerequisites here at TASM, you had to have taken biology before, but you could take chemistry concurrently. So that means at the same time as AP biology, or you should have taken it beforehand. Um, those of you that are taking it at the same time as uh, AP biology, mainly the 10th graders in here, um, I've made some pre AP biology chemistry videos to help you out. Here are the units just at a glance um, in order. It's, Chemistry of life, cells, cellular energetics, cell communication, cell cycle, heredity, gene expression regulation, natural selection, and ecology. Kind of goes from micro to macro, so from small to big. And these pie charts represent the amount of time we'll spend on each. Here are the big ideas, and we call it E squared, I squared. Evolution, so evolution drives the diversity and unity of life. Energy, so biological systems utilize energy and molecular building blocks to grow reproduce and maintain homeostasis. And that dynamic homeostasis is really important, achieved through negative and positive feedback loops. We're going to use information. So the EEI information is living systems retrieve, transmit and respond to information essential to life press, uh, processes. We can think about DNA, RNA, and protein. And a big idea of four is gonna be interactions, right? The biological systems interaction. And these interactions possess complex properties. And I just did a course called Biographs where we learned about complex systems and I'm really excited to bring it more into AP biology. You can think about it like a yummy pizza. The crust would be uh, evolution, the sauce could be energy, cheese would be information, and the spices would be interactions. The units all build upon one another and every single unit contains all of these big ideas. They're all sequenced in there. All right, AP Biology is not only content, a lot of stuff that you have to know, but more importantly, the skills, right? And those content and skills equal AP Biology. You can think of skills at TASM as things like the learner profile. We're working on being creative and critical thinkers and inquirers. And here in AP Biology, some of the skills be a little more science specific. So the content will go micro to macro, and the skills will be intertwined with each unit. And we'll go over those in a minute. An example will be statistical analysis of your results, applying the right statistical test to see if your results are statistically significant. Let's dive through the eight units real quick. This will be part of your summer assignment. This is the chemistry of life. And it starts with water and the elements responsible for life, sulfur, phosphorus, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. And it gets into macromolecules. And this is going to be really important, dealing with carbs, um, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids, and how they work. These molecules by themselves are not alive, but all of them together can help to make up a cell. And this is another example of interactions. And a cell will be the smallest unit of living life. So that'll be unit two, we'll get all into cells. We'll deal with eukaryotes and prokaryotes, um, prokaryotes being bacteria, eukaryotes being plant and animal size. We'll see why cell size has to be small and do several labs of that. We'll then get into maintaining dynamic homeostasis or maintaining equilibrium in cells with transport and diffusion and tonicity. And then last but not least, we'll get into cell compartmentalization and the endosymbiotic theory where um, cells engulfed uh, bacteria that were chloroplasts and mitochondria and have now live in symbiosis together. Unit three is one of my favorites, deals with cellular energetics. So we'll start with enzymes, which is rich with lots of labs and lots of fun activities to do and data to gather and analyze. We'll then get into the mitochondria being the powerhouse of the cell, the 
meme of many an AP biology student and graduation speech. And we'll see why that's a cycle with photosynthesis. And we'll end with fitness. This is a fun one. Um, lots of labs to do, as I said earlier, and um, to see how uh, energy uh, cycles in a system. We'll then get into cellular communication in the cell cycle. This will be new for many students. So how do cells talk to each other? Um, what are some of the properties that come out of that? We'll get into what happens once the cell talks to another cell and um, a signal transduction pathway that makes a response happen. Uh, we'll also deal with feedback um, regarding homeostasis and the cell cycle and we can think about Terry Fox here, right? And how uh, cancer may arise. We'll then go from the cell cycle. So making more cells, for example, from that zygote from a fertilized egg, making trillions of copies of it, and then go back into, well, how do we make reproductive cells? How do we make gametes? And that's through the process of meiosis, um, which evolved from mitosis an absolutely fascinating uh, process. And we'll see how that promotes genetic diversity. And then we'll jump right into genetics. Many people's favorite unit. We'll start with Mendelian genetics and um, uh, monohybrid and dihybrid Punnett squares. And then we'll get into non-Mendelian genetics, sex link traits, um, link traits, et cetera. We'll do some gene mapping and we'll get into um, how the environment may affect phenotype as well. Um, one thing I neglected is this picture right here is really showing that, you know, units five and six heredity and DNA expression, and even unit one with biochemistry, they all tie together. They're all super interconnected, right? When we think about how proteins work and their function, that's biochemistry. When we think about genes coding for proteins, that's molecular biology. And when we think about um, passing on these traits, that is genetics. Unit six deals with gene expression and regulation. So this is DNA to RNA to protein. Super important. Um, and we can look at lots of examples with the coronavirus and what's going on there. And so here um, up top, you can see a picture of um, a flower color gene. And so this is going to code for the flower to be purple. The DNA sequences the gene. It will code for RNA, which will go to a ribosome and make a protein. And that protein will make the flower purple. In AP biology, we'll get into how this is regulated with transcription factors and the Tata box and all types of cool things right here and how that leads to cellular specialization. We'll also learn that the inherent mutability or the ability for DNA to be mutated can be good and bad, but it's ultimately what drives evolution. And so we'll deal with mutations and how that affects the protein. And then we'll uh, also deal with biotechnology and we'll do some labs on um, electrophoresis, PCR, and CRISPR. We'll then get into natural selection, right? You'll review natural selection as part of unit one as an overview of biology, but we'll really dive into what do we mean by evolution by natural selection. Um, we'll deal with the genetic basis of it through the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. We'll do lots of phylogenetic trees as you see here, and we'll get into extinction events. And lastly, but not leastly, we'll debate on the origins of life with the RNA world hypothesis and the iron metabolism first hypothesis. We'll round out the year with ecology, um, thinking about our beautiful ecology here in Oman, about how energy flows through ecosystems, what um, actions drive uh, the control of populations, how those populations interact with each other and what those interactions mean, and then how uh, we can promote, di promote biodiversity in our world. Let's look at some of those skills. And remember, the skills are going to be intertwined with each unit. You should be practicing all the skills every unit. The first skill is just being able to explain concepts, using models and explaining them um, when written in a, when presented in a written format. So looking at something like this signal transduction pathway here, where there's a growth factor and it's telling a cell divide, you should be able to explain that after uh, that unit. And then analyzing visual representations of biological concepts and processes. So trying to make sense of models. And then also determining scientific questions and methods. So setting up experiments. We should be able to describe data and know when to make bar graphs, line graphs. Um, we should be able to compare the standard error, the mean, 
for uh, different populations and see whether or not the results are statistically significant. So that is moving into science practice five here. We'll do statistical tests such as t-tests and chi-square tests to see if our results are um, whether or not we're going to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject it. And in last but definitely not least, we can engage in argumentation. Right? We can say, well, here's our claim evidence and reasoning, um, and that that evidence might be inherent in data and graphs and in the reasoning we describe uh, what's going on scientifically. What are some things that are not in AP biology? Much to the chagrin of many students, uh, anatomy is not in AP biology. So a, a complex overview of human systems is not in the course. Um, there's, I have some resources for you if you're interested in it. And I will bring in the immune system as an illustrative example um, throughout the course, especially dealing with COVID. And then plant physiology is not in the course. So not a lot of botany. Um, if you're interested in botany though, I have some other resources for you as well. There are 13 AP biology labs. We'll do 12 of them. Um, and so uh, some of them are virtual by nature and others um, will be hands-on. And so I'm very excited to do each of them with you uh, here at TASEM. Here's just some examples of ones from the past, plants that I've gotten for uh, the transpiration lab to see how different uh, environmental factors affect transpiration rates. Here's our old but trusty incubator. It works. And then here's us doing the famous potato lab dealing with osmosis and diffusion. Your summer assignment is to check out chapters one through six. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but there's a fair amount of chapter four that you can skip and some in chapter two. And so I have a reading guide and I have practice questions for you that you can check your understanding and you can go through. And I also have my AP uh, videos for unit one and for cells. <laughs> All right, you'll be able to also get some practice on Khan Academy if you'd like, and you can get ahead if you would like to by looking at biostatistics. The summer assignment is located in Google Classroom, and please email me if you're confused at any time, and I will go over it with you. The AP exam, the dates haven't been set as of this recording on May 27th, 2021, but they will be in early May in 2022. Uh, they should be 60 multiple choice questions. There's no penalty uh, for getting a question wrong. And then six free response questions um, that you will work on. One of them has to involve graphing. We will practice on released AP questions throughout the year. And I'll offer two mock exams in the spring. One of them we'll get together and we'll all do together. The other one will be on your own. Let's talk about some coursework in the past. I've given reading quizzes that have been both open or closed notes uh, to help you develop critical reading and note-taking skills. We'll do lab write-ups and data analysis. And of course, we'll have tests uh, to practice for the AP test coming up. Those tests will be on either one to two units at a time. It kind of depends on where we are in the calendar. Um, and they will always involve AP questions. And then we'll also do case studies. And these will be in-depth university level research on topics of your choice. Um, you have a variety of ways to present these. Some of them you'll just write out your answers. Some of them you make YouTube videos or posters, et cetera. All right, students, I hope you found that introduction helpful. Uh, take care and let me know if you have any questions this summer. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in August 2021.